thank you, sir. Thank you so much for the invitation. It's always nice to to be heard with voice instead of writing. Uh, sometimes it's more intimate, if you may. So definitely it's something we really, really appreciate. And thank you so much for this opportunity. Uh, So uh, to put this thing into um, a few words or a few lines, because we are talking about things that happened nine and 10 years ago, it all started as a hobbyist, of course, <laughs> with uh, not much uh, of ambition or intention to do pers progress further. And um, I started uh, doing um, some growls, especially on some cover songs, um, back in 2009 already and there i got many compliments from my friends that this sounds good so maybe i should develop it a bit more um so eventually around 2013 uh, end of 2013 i decided um to form a project and that was callbound and all i had was a basic like i still have here this was like the golden tool to make music a basic m audio fast track sound card and um apart from this um i had a cheap yamaha guitar and a cheap bass which i still have actually somewhere here and uh, that was all i had in order to make some demos or some some kind of music and um of course, I have to mention somewhere here, the, the music was done back then doesn't really reflect the music we are doing now. But um, I have been thinking many times to this band Coldbound for this purpose and the, this reason uh, every time there's a new release coming out because it doesn't remind what was done before and that's not the ambition. Uh, it was basically uh, a big test all these years until we are up to this point checking out sounds and testing sounds in order to uh, get down to the right sound. And I think and feel we are soon there, or we are already there. Um, the Gale was the, the, the experiment that um, made or shaped this sound for Colban at the moment. And uh, yeah, here we have it. We are a band at the moment. And we became a band um, end of 2020 in October, uh, Liv, Christine and Mayu were both part uh, of uh, the album's recording process and produ production process. So uh, these particular people work like this. This is magical. Uh, the way Liv, Christine and Mayu works uh, are uh, is unique because you just give them the track uh, not much um, information or instructions needed in that case. And they come back to you with a killer result. So to me, this was a huge thing. And, and it's a huge blessing, definitely. And those who do music themselves with other people, they maybe understand what I mean. It's a great thing when you are all into the same level of uh, thinking. And uh, the ambition is actually pretty similar. It makes the work much more easier. And that's the reason why we are a three-piece. And there is a reason why uh, we enjoy doing that. And we really, really, really like um, doing this kind of process uh, in our own way. So here you have it. We are a band. <laughs> Well, I'm going to say that in the beginning, it was uh, crucial. It was very important um, uh, in, uh, initial point of start, I would say. Uh, it was basically the compass in the early days that black metal was, of course, of big influence and um, death metal as well. But 
ever since 2017, um, I gladly can say that I discovered this new kind of um, uh, musical dimension, I would say, thanks to a good friend of mine, Nico. And um, yeah, I, I discovered 70s prog rock and uh, ever since progressive rock has been uh, <laughs> something that I really envy in a way, but it's also very interesting to study this kind of music because there's so many things going on into this music and it's just great to, to listen to a, let's say, 10 minute long track and you have all these changes of atmosphere going on in the, in the song, but still the song remains the same. And not only the song, but the whole album per band. So to get back to your uh, to your question, uh, of course, black metal and death metal played a crucial role in the beginning, but it could not offer all I wanted. And this uh, kind of, um, um, I would say progressive rock was the kind of music that offered to me all I was searching for. And it, this is basically a bit magical because um, you have these melodies inside your head, but you can't find any music for these ideas to be applied. And then suddenly you, you check records released 50 years ago and all your ideas are there. And this is great. So there you have your answer. <laughs> um, Slumber of Decay was released by um, uh, a good friend of mine, Mikkel Hansen, from Allegro Talent Media, uh, who he's also a uh, husband to be to Liv Christine. So uh, this project with Slumber of Decay is completely intimate. It feels good because it's a, a process built within a closed inner circle of people. And when we see this reaction from the press and, and, and the audience, we are just flattered because this is a collective force. Uh, it's, it's a collective attempt on making this happen. And it's definitely great. Um, this song was uh, standing out from the album. I have read many times uh, online that uh, this reminds a lot of Draconian, maybe because of the calmer part and the... Uh, uh, so-called spoken words, which are not really spoken words, I have to say. That th this is some kind of theatrical slash cinematic ambiance. But anyways, let's not dive into the technical aspect, but I have to admit that the, the whole melody came uh, one spring day last year. Oh, fuck, <laughs> no, not last year, sorry. Uh, in 2019, yes. The idea came in 2019, two years ago. Uh, it was a beautiful spring day here in Sweden, and uh, I, I was humming this melody from Wishbone Ash um, from the Argus album. Uh, I'm not sure where whether it was the Warrior or Throw Down Your Sword song, but anyways, I, I've been humming this melody a lot, and then I decided to get back to the, the, the music production process. And I started with a certain tempo, a certain beat, and building on top of it. Um, not that Wishbone Ash sound and Colbound sound have an awful lots of things in common. I'm not saying that. <laughs> Would be cool, but unfortunately not. <laughs> uh, but um, this was the main inspiration to get down and start this project called Slumber of Decay. And what happened later on, it's pure product of uh, artistic vision. Um, I hope I didn't try to restrict a lot <laughs> with this Liv Christine or uh, Mayu or any other musician contributed, but um, all I remember is capturing the moment. So first take, it's the accurate one. Uh, and this is the thing with me, I don't record more than the first take because m most of the time the first take sounds good. And this is basically the story of Slumber of Decay. Um, and the album, it's moving a little bit into this kind of direction, like there is lots of music written already. And uh, 
for one to be able to understand this whole thing, it needs to listen to the album from beginning to the end. And this is very important. Otherwise, you derail, you miss the point, and in the end, it sounds basically like any other kind of stuff. But it's important to listen to a concept album from beginning to an end. I'm very, very <laughs> strict with this kind of thumb rule, I would say. Um, and, uh, well, I can't really reveal too much about the new album, but, but one thing I can say is that um, if you're expecting an album to sound or if you are expecting our album to sound like a theater of tragedy 2.0 or another gothic metal release or another melodic death metal release, then unfortunately I have to tell you that this ain't gonna happen because this album, what we are putting right now, it's uh, an album made for people that love music. And by that, I mean, there are so much things going on into this album. There's lots of instruments. I mean, there's more or less 45 people contributing into it and you can imagine any kind of instruments on the planet being part of this album and um, from an artistic perspective or standpoint this is a a, a deal you do with yourself like you, you have this planning which is crazy in the beginning because you see the numbers you see the hours of work you need to devote and then you start doubting like will this happen will this work but then you start working on it and you see things are actually happening. And then later on, you are into the point that it can't be done any better. And right now, as we speak, we are soon into that point that it feels that after three years of work, it can't be done any better. So uh, what I can say only about this upcoming album is that, yes, it's not going to be another theater of tragedy release. Uh, there's no point in doing that for many reasons because it was done uh, from the real people into the, the theater of tragedy and it will be a bit of an insult in order to try to replicate something like that with the original singer of the band. I understand how this sounds but it's not our ambition uh, only because we have such big respect towards this historic band and um, it will not be another symphonic metal band with only exclusively orchestrations. Yes, there are orchestrations. There's lots of orchestrations, but also lots of instruments that are not really uh, heard into symphonic metal music. Uh, our music is not going to be um, uh, restricted into a specific genre. It's music made for music lovers. And we really hope that you're going to uh, understand our point of view and that you're going to enjoy this as much as we do. As I said before, both Liv, Christine and Mayu are fantastic uh, partners in crime when it comes to the music writing. And not only, of course. Uh, to work with uh, someone like Liv, Christine, it's, a, it's definitely something that is not granted. It's not to be taken for granted. Uh, it, it's like a, a huge thing for me as a person. Um, I'm 26 years old and all I remember like a decade ago was my adolescence was spent into theater of tragedy tunes and Liv Christine shaped this universe inside me. And now what are the odds that we are making music together? And this is definitely unique, definitely highly uh, respectable. It's still a dream to me that this is happening both with Mayu and Liv Christine. Um, 
it's of course uh, a huge privilege. It's no doubt. This is a huge, huge thing, a huge, generous privilege. What I say fa- I'm facing here, being able to make music with such people. And yes, you're correct. Liv Christine is amazingly supportive person and not only sweet and generous, but optimistic about what we are doing. Like, and this is the kind of people you need when you have a band. You don't need to to highlight the the negativity over um, this fun pro- process of music making, but you need people that are actually optimistic. And there are these people. I have to tell you that, like Liv Christine, they will manage to find the light inside the dark tunnel, magically, because these people trust the process, and this is very important when you are putting something up. So definitely, it's it's a huge thing that Liv Christine and Mayu are part of this. This is just great. Um, yeah, Lindsay Schoolcraft is one of them. Fantastic musician, like, basically, she delivered a killer result. Uh, some other musicians that we have announced are a uh, good old friend of mine from the old days, uh, Seaman from Borknagar, Arcturus, ex Dimo Borgir, known also as ICS Vortex. Um, and uh, of course, there is a. There are two people also. Uh, my favorite growler, actually, uh, Matthias from um, End Oceans, Dispute, uh, Fintroll, and a bunch of other bands. Sorry, Matthias, if I forgot some bands, but <laughs> you're a busy guy. And um, my favorite male clean vocals are part of this album as well. Um, um, Mikko Heikla from uh, Kaunis Kuolematon and um, uh, Dawn of Solas and other projects. And of course, there's a huge amount of musicians being part of this. I just named three people, four with Linsic of the, the collaborators and the set musicians. So, um, yeah. lyrics the answer is lyrics uh, to make lyrics is a very dangerous business as a good friend of mine have said Pasi, uh, who recorded the solo on slumber of decay as well to make lyrics is a extremely difficult thing to do for many reasons uh, because you have to think like the lyrics are going to mirror the music back and forth and uh, a set of bad lyrics will actually make the music sound bad. It's weird, isn't it? But catchy lyrics or good lyrics are not going to work against you. And um, not only that, but the most important thing you have to focus on is to make lyrics that are coming from your heart and beyond real. So a good song needs good lyrics. And to make good lyrics is very difficult. It's easy to make good riff or a good drum groove or a cool keyboard solo but to make lyrics is damn hard and takes most of the time and sometimes it's not fun but but it starts getting fun when you get into the the, the trance of okay now we, we have a story line and we we try to follow from there then it starts getting fun i have to say but that's my answer lyrics is the hardest thing during a production period Today, every single day is a great achievement. Um, 
so I'm sure today is the day and tomorrow it will be the best day of Callbound and so on and so forth. This is because we are relatively new into this. Uh, one of the days that will forever reign into my memory is the day we made it public that we are a band. This is like a huge day for me ever since October 2020. But every single day we are spending upon the earth and we see the numbers and the reaction from people, it automatically makes it the best day ever or the best day than the previous day. And also the fact that we are functioning like a family, we have fully understanding into what we are doing. And this is unique and rare and great. This makes it even better, even more special. And it adds the cherry on the, on, on the pie, if you may. So yeah, this is my answer to this question. Well, the response has been surprisingly uh, positive and the numbers themselves are beyond any belief. But then again, it's worth to mention that we are working with uh, very, very skillful people within the industry and therefore we have this kind of um, number explosion, I would say, because it's less than a week and still the numbers are very satisfying and the reactions are great uh no th that's all i have to say that the, the reaction is fantastic it's all i expected and um <laughs> the negative comments or negative would be that um, our music sounds similar to another great band but this is not necessarily negative this is just you know <laughs> comparing to the rest of the answers or the comments that some people think we sound like this band or like this band, but this is all right because in 2021, it's pretty hard to make music from the scratch and make it sound unique. But nevertheless, we, we are trying to. I have to assure, assure you about that. And Um, God damn it, this is very hard, very hard to answer in a few lines. Uh, actually, I don't know. I mean, there is lots of influences. There's huge number of influences. Um, let's change the question a bit, if I may. <laughs> uh, instead of... Uh, the word influence is let's use the word eye opener. And this is definitely definitely my good friend uh, Nico Salmi from Solitaire that not only has inspired me to broaden my musical horizons, he is a fantastic musician and guitarist. Um, his attitude is one of a kind. And also, uh, you know, basically. I see this guy doing it all for the music and that's how it should be. It should be music done for the music and not music done for the sake of um, of commercial potentials or stuff like that. No, it's, it should be strictly music for music and whatever happens ever since, uh, af afterwards is another process. But Nico Salvi has been a huge um, influence, inspiration to what I am up to. And of course, my bandmates, Mei Yuanho, has been a huge influence since I was 16 years old or 15. <laughs> Same with Liv Christine. Um, even though we, Liv Christine is a bit special because it's one of these people I could never imagine doing music with. Not for any other reason, but because of the greatness of her career. This is so unreal to me even nowadays. I can't believe it. How great is that? <laughs> and. Um, yeah, of course I have been influenced a lot by the sound of Pink Floyd throughout their career because they have released 
albums that are different from the previous ones. And the soundscapes they are putting into their music, it gives food for thought. Like you, you just have this opportunity to analyze how these sounds are created and how these frequencies are circulating around. And this is just fantastic. It, it makes you a better uh, music maker. If you try to understand such kind of music, it's only going to work for your, uh, positively for you and for your own uh, interest as well. Um, there are so many other people, but let's cut this short because I feel if I start listing down the, the greatness of the people that have influenced uh, my world into music, I'm pretty sure I will exclude some without my will, and this will be unfair. So let's say like that, you guys, you know who you are. And definitely I'm inspired by lots of people. And also, <laughs> I don't know if I should mention it, but um, uh, lately I'm, I'm not listening into metal music anymore because I, I feel like uh, it has nothing much to give to me. But I got a mention from a good friend of mine to check this Dutch band called Arion. Uh, and uh, there I realized we have something in common, like we have a huge amount of guests. But I have to say, the, the music uh, Arian produces is phenomenal. It's one of a kind. Uh, it's so rich in everything, in colors, in emotions, in, in melodies. And uh, this is also a very big influence lately. Uh, and this music came down into the right time when I thought that now this album is getting too much. I should cut something out or stop producing even more. And then Arian came into my life and I sort of understood that nothing is impossible as long as it follows a certain, a certain pattern and um, a steady flow. So the music doesn't derail us from the main point of it. So definitely, this is a great influence as well. Uh, and I have to say in public, Arian, dude, thank you for your music. This is fantastic what you're doing. And without you, this world would have been way too poor musically. Kudos. Very, very difficult question, as I said before. Um, for the purpose that, or the reason that I have stopped listening to metal a couple of years now. Oh boy, I, I can't really come up with a top five in this case. Um, it will be pretty, it will be very, very unfair to lots of bands if I decide to come up with a top five. But, um, Sorry, I can't answer this question. This is, you, you're you limiting me a lot in there with this number of five bands. There are lots of, there are lots of great, great releases, but unfortunately I can't really come up now with a top because my psychosynthesis and mindset is changing uh, according to the seasons. So it's something that I will listen today, but I'm pretty sure I will not listen it to it tomorrow. Nevertheless, doesn't it doesn't make it less bet better or less good? Uh, but this is how I function, and I prefer to function that way because it refreshes your ears, especially when you're producing music and you do music. Uh, you need uh, something different and something to refresh your ears a little bit and relax your brain also. Unfortunately, there is a lot of elitism um, behind the keyboard. It's, it's just crazy how people can uh, have these radical opinions that are dangerous for the society in the first place. Um, they, they are igniting a sparkle that doesn't serve a good purpose. And this actually manages to divide 
people and categories or create more sub categories of uh, audience um it has affected definitely definitely has affected not only me but everyone who's making music it's important impossible to to see a new release nowadays and not read the comments such as like this should be done like that or this sounds like that the way people are assuming um radically it's very dangerous in my opinion and that's something that we need to fix because if we complain about how the world is uh functioning nowadays we can't really dismiss this kind of facts but if we want a better world we really have to start from somewhere and uh, erase um, elitism it's important or try to eliminate elitism there's no fucking point on having elitism either since music it's made to be enjoyed and also music is a alternative channel to to pass our thoughts into the world in words and melodies we can't express with normal speaking so it makes this whole process sacred it makes this whole process a holy process if you may so to have elitism amidst this kind of process i i don't see the point with that i i clearly don't see the point with um being radical in opinions just sit back enjoy the music have a good glass of wine or beer or water whatever makes you feel good and let the producers judge if their music is good or not <laughs> unfortunately i have done that mistake back in the days um i've been judging some certain bands way too harsh but then i realized how fucking stupid i was for doing that because i didn't pay any money for this production i was just lucky enough to click a link and listen to a great song and it was not enough for me i have to find things to complain and this is the problem nowadays but thanks to the corona i feel like the society has gone more united and more divided where it needs to be divided but generally it has gone more united i can't really say how great it is to see people buying merchandise in this time of our era when things are so strange and a certain a, a steady income is not to be taken for granted it's kind of crazy but those who are still supporting the music by buying merchandise or uh, by taking five minutes from their precious time in order to write the positive feedback these people are heroes and we have to thank these people because without these people there wouldn't be much music out there or motivation to make music and this is great now the industry is functioning in a very very uh <laughs> um special way i would say but then again um we really have to give it to them uh the audience that support are the real heroes and my biggest respect to you guys you deserve all the best on earth and uh, thanks to you the elitism issue is not that high up because it's important to grab the positivity of the day instead of focusing on something negative and insignificant at the same time so there you have this long answer i would say sorry about that Oh boy, there are lots of projects I am involved to. Mostly um, projects that I make for fun, but they have a potential, I would say. Currently, I'm <laughs> I am um, composing some um, weird music. I can't really categorize it in any genre. It's a mix of uh, Depeche Mode and uh, and uh, Kingston Wall and anyways it, or uh, hydra space folk it's a finnish great band and um, this is all about soundscapes it's uh it's a mix of rock music um with melodies or prog rock music and a bunch of analog keyboards to create this wave of sound and um 
this is my main side project at the moment. Like it's fun to make it and it's fun to create music, despite the fact that you don't see this being a success later on. But but after a very exhausting day um, on being on a computer with Coldbound, I find this two hours of composing as a elixir and a medicine to to come back the ne the day after with a clean head and something good to listen to. Uh, apart from that, uh, there are some one more or two projects that I might do some stuff later on, but I can't really say too much about it as not many things are confirmed. But definitely, of course, uh, bring them on. It's amazing to make music. It's like <laughs> the heaven of a music maker. And that's what makes me happy to create music, no matter the genre. It's just great. I have stopped following uh, Swedish metal scene in long time. Uh, I just lose, lost interest. It's not that Sweden is producing actually some very fucking good music, but uh, uh, I don't feel that it has something to give to me. Um, nevertheless, we can't take this away from Sweden that one of the best bands in the world are established in Sweden. And uh, this is a fact. Uh, the radio is playing that kind of music all the time, anyways. And this is fantastic when you consider the fact that in other parts of the world, metal music or rock music is not that much of a thing. It's still a taboo. It sucks a lot that it's still a taboo in a couple of countries or certain countries. Luckily, in Sweden, it's commercialized. And this is good because... Um, it creates a bigger uh, audience because if you're driving a long distance, for example, and you're listening to radio and you switch channel and then you are listening to this metal hit and you start liking it, you'll get into it eventually. And this is great. And I think Swedish media, it's, uh, we, we have to give it to the Swedish media. They have done great work on that. And even if I don't listen that much to metal anymore, I start listening more to radio, radio music. Uh, through rock stations or stations that play metal. And it's interesting. It's, it's interesting because I don't have to care about what song comes afterwards. There's someone else who does it for me. And most of the times I also bump into old classics that I never heard before. For example, Pearl Jam songs or Soundgarden or Red Hot Chili Peppers songs. And um, some other times I bump into metal tracks that are new but I didn't thought they would be on the radio. So I have this uh, magical moment in discovering and refreshing sounds from the past and, and the future, why not? Or the present. Um, but definitely Swedish scene has uh, lots of great, great musicians, world-class level. And uh, again, to name bands or projects will be unfair to some other bands and projects. So. Believe me when I say this, metal is pretty mainstream in Sweden, and I hope it remains in long time. And of course, you have the Swedish death metal. I mean, this is a product exported by Sweden. It's a great thing. It's a fantastic thing. Ladies and gentlemen, well, take good care of yourself. Thank you for checking this out and thank you for supporting good music. And remember, guys, we need you. We wouldn't be able to do this without you. And that's not bollocks. That's actually the truth. We really need you into our lives and we really appreciate every single comment you guys drop. And we make the best to get back to you with it. So stay true to yourselves and stay healthy. Let's hope this shit with the pandemic will go away in the not so distant uh, future. <laughs> Let's hope it's in our hands or partially. Well, 
we are a new form band. So, well, definitely, of course, would be great, would be cool to discover this part of the world. And this is our only opportunity to have a reason to come, maybe. But I always wanted to visit Sri Lanka, to be honest. Um, I saw some program long time ago when I was a kid about elephants in Sri Lanka. And I always would like to visit your beautiful exotic country. Um, exotic given the circumstances of the place I'm living, <laughs> of course. Um, yes, definitely. I would like to visit Sri Lanka for concerts and not only, also for vacations. Why the hell not? Definitely, definitely. I would, I would be very up to it. But, you know, let's see because the situation now is a bit unstable with the pandemic and um, let's see what the future brings. Fingers crossed. You never know. Thank you. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to talk a little bit about Colbund. And not only, I hope I didn't consume much of your time. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. <laughs>